I'm sure I'll get an email from Stan like 20 minutes after the meeting ends. You ready? Can I, can I update it? Like, okay, dude, I get it. You know? <laughs> I may have my camera off a little bit. I gotta eat lunch sometime. So Ed, I'm not doing any kind of introduction or anything. I guess really? just whenever you whenever you're ready to go. <laughs> okay. Is that the waiting room cleared for now? Um yeah, I'm I'm watching that. So I think we're I think we're good. Okay, so like our, our initial plan was see if anyone who's turned up has questions or once hey ed i'm wondering since we have some new people who we do haven't some... participated before to just kind of do a brief uh like summary of what audiovisual core is <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and yeah. what this group is and how it relates to that okay so um audiovisual core is a tablet standard for managing media so that's historically mainly been images um Dan and I have done a lot of work on sound recently. Um, Steve, you've been involved in the 3D group more than I have. But so kind of any kind of media and how that, any kind of, or biodiversity related media. And the, the maintenance group, which Dan, Steve and I are on, and hopefully there'll be a few more later on, kind of, I guess, guides the future development of that. So adding new terms, um, getting little groups together to work on different kinds of media or new types of media and bringing that all in. So is, is that enough of an overview or does <laughs> try not to go like too far into the weeds straight away? <laughs> um, and so like our, our plan for this session was, and like, so the maintenance group like now meets monthly. So we kind of have a fairly decent pace of discussion. Um, so we have like two two like things we're going to do today. One is anyone who's who's turned up and joined us, if they want to hear about anything specific or have any specific questions or use cases they want to discuss, we're, we'll go with that first. And then our other time was we have a bit of a issue queue on our, on our GitHub of people making requests and um, tasks for the maintenance group to do, which we're going to just run through and get a sense check of once we've sorted everyone else else's questions and queries out. So. Do any of you have questions or queries of us or use cases you want to discuss? Um, yeah, maybe just a question a little bit in general. What would be the status of like a 3D media describing these? So, because we have this as a use case and I'm not sure how far it wants. To, yeah, the vocabulary is there. I think that's yeah. Do I, I? I can. Uh, yeah. So I'm not intimately involved involved in the um, task group, but there there is a task group that we sponsor that has been working on ter um, metadata terms for specifically for 3D media, and they're a part of a larger 
a group that's focused on on 3D standards. And I think their mature their work is actually fairly mature. They for at least a year now they've been saying like we're basically done. So they I think it's really just an issue of dragging it across the finish line like the the they have a set of terms that apply specifically to 3D uh, images that they are going to propose to be added as sort of like a, not really an extension, but like a, a suite of terms that uh, would be grouped together as appropriate for specifically for 3D images. So yeah, that that's actually fairly uh, far along. And I think it's really just a question of getting um, the group to finalize the proposal and open it for public comment. Okay, I can see you. if I can find a link to, to their work and I'll put it in the chat. Yeah, yeah that would be very helpful. Cool. Thanks. So, so I think that's something on our, like, definitely this year list, isn't it? Getting that over the line. Yeah. So does anyone else have questions or queries, use cases? Anything they want to discuss before we look at the issue queue? I'm uh, so I'm on the uh, the uh, the maintenance group, um, but I don't know most of the people here. And since it is eight people, I wonder if a very quick intro round. I, I hate to uh, I hate yeah. to force it out of you, but it might be it might be useful for us to know who's uh, who's listening, even even if you don't have specific questions to bring right now. Everyone's looking uncomfortable. <laughs> Hello. Hi, my name is Leanna. I work at the New York Botanical Garden. I am um, the Herbarium Digital Asset Manager, so I manage all of our media related to our specimens. Um, and I'm really just joining to see what's going on. I don't have a lot to add. I'm just kind of trying to get involved a little bit. <laughs> That's great. But uh, media for you would be images. Would that images be right? primarily, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Um, I should. Uh, I'll, I'll introduce myself since I started it. I'm Dan Stahl, and I work on um, a lot of sound uh, uh, of, of various animals and uh, automatic recognition of those. So I'm interested in making sure that we can share and merge data sets for that kind of thing. I'm working at Naturalis in uh, in the Netherlands, and that's me. Shall I pick on someone, David, perhaps? Yeah, sure. <laughs> I think that that's the best way that because the, the order is for everybody different. So, uh, hi, I'm David Fichtmüller. I work at the Botanic Garden in the Botanical Museum in Berlin. Um, I'm just uh, yeah adjacently interested uh, in audiovisual core. Uh, um, I yeah uh, helped with the with the review and um, uh, so I've been following it for a couple of years now. Also uh, because I'm. I did uh, my studies in uh, well uh, informatics, but in particular in international media and computing. So I'm always, uh, yeah, interested in in the media aspects, uh, uh, different media files, and and so on. But um, yeah, I just wanted to to follow the developments. I'm also in uh, charge of the ABCD um, maintenance group, um, and so. Yeah, just uh, keep in focus how things are developing. Um, I was also involved in OpenDS, and I'm still adjacently involved there. So, yeah. That's great. Thanks. Um, Jonas? Yeah, hi. Uh, Jonas, uh, I work at the St. Bernard Natural History Museum in Frankfurt, Germany, together with Klaus, actually, from the same institution. Um, yeah, so we have the case that we have quite an old historical CMS, uh, the institution which only can handle images. And we had a lot of requests of researchers in our institution, which like are uh, yeah, digitizing 3D objects and what to bring this into the CMS. And yeah, so we're trying to come up with a solution for this. That's why I had the question on the 3D. Um, yeah, attribution. We're also involved, maybe Klaus will talk more about this in Disco, and uh, we're looking into yeah, um, 
machine learning applications also yeah we look a lot on uh, yeah herbarium images here and so we can do annotations and so on so that would be another maybe general question also from my side uh, because I saw that uh, that that uh, audiovisual core has this region of interest vocabulary where if we're annotating things and right now we're using more the triple IF style which makes use of the um, of the uh, web and web annotation ontology so I was wondering where they are the relationships. But uh, yeah, it's just a thing for later. Uh, maybe I just hand over to Klaus for introduction. Yeah, hi Klaus. Um, I think Jonas said most uh, of it. I'm uh, working for Sengenberg as Jonas, a large biodiversity provider in Germany. We are also active as part of the distributed system of scientific collections, which is a pendant for those based in the US um, uh, to uh, to Ida Bio in Europe, um, and uh, in uh, that project, we are involved in the setup of the technical architecture. We do this in a couple of other mostly European projects. Uh, there is some with more relation to Earth uh, observation called um, Biodiversity Digital Twin. And in this respect, we work on huge amounts of data integration and uh, use also annotation, as Jonas already said, in uh, yeah, the context of uh, uh, different sensor obtained data. I'm myself from my uh, scientific uh, background, mostly interested in uh, multimodal audio and sound annotation. I work with um, sound field recordings uh, during my study, which is long, long ago. And now I work a little bit more in uh, image capturing from uh, camera traps. And of course, interested to use um, audio visual core to describe these. Uh, uh, yeah, digital objects as we call them and streams. Um, what we do is also develop a few standards. So we are a little bit involved in the development of MITs in the context of digitization. We have our own standard in DISCO, which is somewhat TEDWIC aligned, but I'm not part of uh, any uh, TEDWIC working group called OpenDS, which describes a specific kind of data model we develop in DISCO called digital specimen. And as well, I'm somewhat involved in the oboe framework with uh, an annotation tool for um, yeah the whole biodiversity of wild or the whole diversity of wildlife plants called flora phenotype ontology. Uh, we started a couple of years ago in a naturalist project, a project I think called Pro I Biosphere, which is now gone. It was a predecessor of Disco, so to say. Um, yeah, that's my main interest. Learn more uh, how you use the annotation. I've just stumbled recently in the uh, controlled vocabulary you use, for example, the plant ontology, and yeah, started working with this. So I'm just interested to see what the state is. Sounds good. Thank you, Ben. I'm uh, I'm Ben Norton. I, I do um, a, a bunch of stuff. I, I I'm fairly active in Tadwig and different groups and test groups and interest groups. And I'm chair now of the uh, technical architecture group. I've done, I've also worked a lot on geosciences and data standards with mineralogy extension. I'm a co-convener of that one. And then I uh, just, we just, I just submitted the letter to finish up the final part of the public review for Latimer Core. I was a review manager for that. Um, so finally, I, I had to write a letter. So I've, 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 I've sent it, sent it to David Blumenstein. I, I said it off the hook this time, Steve. I've asked you to do so many help things. <laughs> Help me with so many things over the course of Latimer Core. I said a desk those guys for this one. Um, I've done stuff with camera traps, uh, machine learning, all kinds. It was a collection data curator and publisher for 10 years and just all kinds of different things. So, And I've, I've built a uh, digital asset manager for my previous institution for managing 3D models. I've built a 3D model viewer, image management, things like that. So it's good. Awesome, thanks. I'm, I'm really interested to hear of the, okay, we've got different modalities represented here and in, in the interest that we've heard about and different standards. Um, yeah, so um, that's that's useful for me to to know uh, who's here. Thank you. I want to, uh, I guess I had hand back to Ed to uh, take charge again. Sorry for interrupting with all that. No, that's not oh, do you want me to introduce myself? I got skipped. <laughs> Sorry, go for um, it. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm Steve Baskoff, uh, and I'm uh, I work in the Vanderbilt Libraries, but uh, I'm a biologist by training, 
and I've been involved. I, I was the review manager for Audiovisual Core when it was first ratified. So I've been involved uh, with it for a pretty long time. Um, I, yeah, so in the past, uh, so I was the convener of the, the views controlled vocabularies task group. And as a part of that work, um, we, we had this issue of, you know, how do you designate uh, a view that is for a particular part of a media object. And, and so that's kind of like the genesis of the, or, you know, how the regions of interest proposal came about. And, and we did look at IIIF with, with uh, that, but IIIF is generally talking, well, not always, but <laughs> um, yeah, we, there are some idiosyncrasies of audiovisual core like involving service access points and uh, stuff like that, that we had to handle in developing the regions of interest. So it, it, that's why it's kind of a homegrown thing and not just something that we adopted from somewhere else. So one of the issues that we're interested in, and this overlaps, I think, with things like CamTrap DP is how do you, uh, like how do you describe or serialize data um, that is a subset of a larger da data set? So like if you have a set of images that come from a burst on a camera trap, or you have a set of regions of interest that are from a single media item, um, like how, how do you actually create, how do you actually serialize that like in, in JSON or JSON LD? So that's, something that I'm interested in um, as like future work for this group. Great, thanks, Steve. Um, I guess before we go on, is there anything that comes immediately from that <laughs> round of introductions? Any? Ed, who are you? Who am I? <laughs> <laughs> so like, um, I, I've been working at the Natural Museum in London and I've worked there several times on several of the predecessor EU projects to Disco actually on um, was it uh, Vibrant and some of those ones but I'm working there now as acoustic biology researcher so entirely focused on acoustics now. That's a fantastic job title by the way. Just, <laughs> just you know, like, it sounds awesome. It's, like my previous, I had previously had one at the, at the museum called Sonic Biologist, which I thought was even better, but <laughs> they wouldn't let me have it. We have to have research in it. Okay, so, um, thank you. There's like quite a broad range of interest there. And I think a few people have brought up stuff which is on the issue queue, or at least tangential to things on the issue queue. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to share... May I just say, so one thing that comes to mind, there was, there was the uh, IIIF question, and beyond what Steve already said, there's also the question of uh, two-way interoperability. So there's a little bit of work to try and make sure that they're two-way interoperable. And that's not completely, um, it, that's not 100% possible because of the idiosyncrasies that Steve mentioned. But yeah, there are, there are scripts and examples which we have, which... It's you know they they are broadly interoperable. Great, thanks, so. Dan. Um, in that case, uh, shall I just share my screen so we can go through the issue queue in a kind of root manner? Sounds good. Okay, so working. Yes, so good. Okay. Um, I guess there's only 23, and I think some of them are quite easy. So shall we just go top to bottom? I think this, this one's mostly been done. So this is just an error in the documentation. I think, Steve, you're fixed. Is this fixed, Steve? Can we close this one? Um, I would have to look at that and, and check. Uh, well, yeah, it says fixed. fixed then. <laughs> okay, so I guess that's done. <laughs> <laughs> do you, do, should I close it now or do you want to double check? 
Um, yeah, I'll I'll double check, but if okay. it's it's got a merge um, notation on it, so I'm pretty sure that that one's done. Okay. It's nice. Hopefully, they'll be this. Um, this is from. This one is from Carlos, who's not here. So I think that's a question for. So that that relates to Miri Atrix, which is Carlos's scratch pad and some data integration. So I don't think that's actually one for us. Or like, it's not something we can address right now. Error in definition of a subject part concept scheme. I'll have a quick read so I can be a moment. Do you remember? Yeah, I think there was an error and we were just talking yeah. about um, uh, improving the wording a little bit. Um, so I think this this type of error doesn't require any like official process. I don't think it just it just is on the like if, if we figure out what wording we want, it can just be on the to do list for the next release. Okay, you have to like move all of your faces to the other side. We got we go on. I think we just add a label for for next release and then. So it, like we can do that and just keep track of things we've planned to do for next time. Okay, so this is discussing putting keys in as media objects, which I which could either be really simple as a media type <laughs> or it could be really complicated if we try and make a way of linking through stuff. Yeah, it seems like this is something that needs to be fleshed out and it may be that um we would need to have like a task group or something for that. Cause I, I think, um, yeah, it, I, I think it's not like a simple question. <laughs> yeah. It's like, if, if it's a picture of a key, right, it's really simple. And if it's, if we start getting into keys, that's a whole minefield. Yeah. I mean, I think the question is how do you describe a key in audio visual core? And I, I don't, I think this is similar to other issues that we have, like video, for example, like there is a need for working on that, but um, somebody has to take leadership on it. So I think in this case, if somebody is very motivated to develop a vocabulary for keys, <laughs> they could form a, a task group or whatever, or, or just work on it within this group. But I think Otherwise, I don't know that we have the bandwidth necessarily to work on that. Okay, I think we leave that for now, unless any of you have a real burning desire to immediately create a task group to work on keys. <laughs> so I hadn't realized that this is actually quite detailed annotation of the keys. Um, so simply identifying that there is a key in this region is is not at all what's being asked for here, right? So I, I don't actually, I don't know if they just want like a key with, sorry for scrolling this, I'll try and scroll on my other computer. Um, the example, okay. sorry, the uh, the example in uh, given in the last comment in the thread, 
gives something like the scope that the they're yeah. asking for, which is but yeah. A full list of identifiable units. Like that's just having a that could be as simple as having a picture of a list of tax a picture of a key of a list of taxa, right? But whether that's actually useful. Mm. I've, I've, I, I, I think that what they want is basically specific vocabulary terms for describing like the scope of what's included in the key and so on. I mean, it's kind of like um, the way the Humboldt extension provides additional terms to Darwin core for describing ecological inventories, like all the different features of that. So I think it, I think it would, it, it essentially would extend audiovisual core to being able to describe keys in the same way we've extended it to describe sound and that sort of thing. And I mean, to do that, we need, we need a group of people who are experts in keys yeah. to help us figure out what those terms are. And I, I don't think that we can, I mean, I don't think anybody within the existing group right now has the expertise to do that. I, I guess the other way, like Steve, is, is, is should we actually consider stuff like that in scope or should we, should there be a separate I, standard for keys? I think it, I mean, if you look at the dis original description of, of, uh, audiovisual core, I mean, it's mentioned as, you know, um, as one of the types of, the, like, I think it in the subtype vocabulary that interactive key or whatever is one of the subtypes listed there. So I think at least originally people were thinking of this as something that would be within scope. But that would be in the sense of like just putting in a lucid key or something and just describing the lucid key itself. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, mean, I guess I would just let this one sit until somebody <laughs> comes along and wants to work on it. Yeah. Um, so, I, I, yeah. Sorry, so in, in other contexts, <clears throat> I, I, leaving things lying around like this is, is not ideal and closing it with a won't fix is uh is the more responsible thing to do. Um, if we're not going to do it this year, then I would suggest putting it as a won't fix, and then and people, it's okay to reopen the issue, right? Okay. Yeah, I think that's within the spirit of the you know annual meeting thing that we try to clear, keep the issue tracker clear of, and and not have things that are sitting around for years and years and years that don't ever get acted on. Okay. I'll close that afterwards and I'll write like I won't do it now just so I can write something saying decision making process and like we're not being rude, we just don't have the, the bound capacity or anything at this moment. Um this one update, how do we do it? So the so Peter's working on that and we're just waiting for the final release of a Tadwig branding. Okay, I mean that's a technical thing for Peter to worry about. Yeah, but... it looks like that. Like maybe Matt Blissett needs to be. It, 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 he's um, Peter has pinged Matt as something that he needs to do. So maybe we just need to follow up with him. Uh, if you look at the checkbox near the top task, uh, and, and yeah, remove the redirect. Yeah, I think this is just something that Matt Blissett needs to do <laughs> so maybe yeah. just in the box just say at matt blissett um what what do we need to do to finish this or something yeah okay i'll, I'll do that straight after the meeting just for the sake of getting through things and new term proposal i'm just going to scroll up so you can see it Yeah, so I can talk a little bit about this. Um, so there was a um, there was a desire in the three D group to have a basically a type 
for digital 3D resources. And one of the things that caused that group to get bogged down was going to the Dublin core uh, group and seeing if we could get it added as a type there. And they basically said, nah, we don't, we don't really, we don't really change Dublin core anymore. So I think then it just fell back on this group um, to uh, to create the term. And I think one of the things that was confirmed is that this would be used as a value for Dublin core type. And I think there was a feeling at, among some people that values for Dublin core type had to be part of the Dublin core type vocabulary. And, and so that was why we were trying to get it added. But I think that the, the DCMI group that we talked with said, no, that doesn't have to be in the DCMI type vocabulary. You can, you can use your own terms. So I think this is just something um, that should be handled as a part of whatever proposal the um, 3D group comes with, up with. I mean, it's really kind of independent of that. So we could just, but, but I, I would say this is a pretty mature proposal that really just needs to be included in whenever we have our next public comment period, just include this one with it. Because I think from the perspective of the 3D group, they have basically uh, said this is what they want. Okay. Okay. Do, do, do. So, I mean, I guess from this perspective of like the maintenance group's responsibility, um, this is basically the maintenance group has to decide, is this a mature proposal that we can advance to public comment? And um, I, I would say it is, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but we could, we could decide that today and then just tag it as like um, ready for public comment. Uh, but I, I don't know whether people have had enough time to to review it to actually say that maybe maybe we should make a decision about that. Maybe we should look at it between now and the next meeting and then make a decision at the next meeting as to whether it's ready to advance to public comment. Yeah, I, I think probably at our, our next meeting when there's a few more of the maintenance group around. Uh, particularly those who have been involved in the 3D stuff anyway, in case they want to make any like last minute comments and then, but it does look pretty, pretty good for next. Yeah. So on. just for, for those of you who are, are not, have not like been a part of the group. So this group is basically responsible for managing the process for adding or changing audiovisual core and so anyone basically can propose changes, um, but those changes have to meet certain criteria that are spelled out. One of them is like, it, ha it can't have an adverse effect on like stability. It also, there has to be shown that there's multiple people want it. And so the fact that this was basically suggested by the 3D task group, which represents a large constituency, I think it passes that bar. So we, so the maintenance group basically has to look at a proposal and say like, is there a consensus? Is there a need? And is this gonna have no adverse effect on like existing terms that we have? So I think that's what the group has to judge. And then when a proposal's determined to meet those criteria, then we advance it to public comment uh, 30 day public comment and, you know, take into consideration those comments, make any necessary revisions, and then it goes for executive committee uh, approval. So basically the, the maintenance group is like the gatekeeper for, for this process. And that's kind of like what we've been talking about uh, with respect to this proposal. I think that's, well, I, I guess it makes sense to package it with the rest of the 3D stuff. Now that's nearing completion and people can public comment on the whole raft of 3D stuff, I think. Ben, you've got your hand up. Yeah. What is the criteria you guys use to, to, to determine whether or not something is um, 
Um, it's in the it, it's in the vocabulary maintenance specification. I, I don't. It's like near the beginning of it, okay. but um, there's yeah. I I can find it and put it in the chat. Awesome. And so the, from there, the decision making process is basically a meeting. You guys discuss it, then as a group, sort of decide what to do. But the criteria yeah. So the pass. for for the um. For a new standard, as you are aware, there's a process that involves a review manager who manages the process. But for the existing vocabulary standards, that role of managing the process falls on a, on the main, maintenance group. So, you know, which is basically this group. Okay. Um. The guano metadata standard. I think the only thing that came up with this was some time expansion stuff you put in, Dan, or commented on. Yep. Um, so I, 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 other filter as well. Yeah. So I guess the the context for this is that uh, as we've been developing the audio side of audiovisual core, we've been investigating various standards such as. IIIF and so on, and we've, um, yeah, we try to uh, maximize interoperability as we go along. And the reason we have this issue here is that we didn't really go through the Guano standard. Um, so Guano is this standard that's used for audio metadata, and I'm aware of it being used in um, a few different pieces of audio software. It's not the most widespread thing in the world, but it is used in some significant applications. Um, the reason they have this time expansion uh, aspect, which is uh, which you see in the thread, that's used when recording ultrasonic sounds, such as bat sounds often. So um, yeah, this relates to a particular use case, which is unusual in many audio applications, but it's um, specific to some of our taxa. So I guess that's it. And so the issue is to in investigate it. We have at least in some sense investigated <laughs> it. Um, and what do we do now? Um, I'm, I'm kind of happy with media speed as the inverse, I guess. The other thing that you mentioned there is like the high pass and low pass filters, which I think is fairly I think it probably is useful for those of us who work on sound libraries. Quite often, like low pass, well, high pass is quite used as an old cut off, and I think. Um, is that something you want to return to in the next year? Or I don't have very many strong motivations here, and um, I think given that, given where I see guano being used. Uh, and one example is that people, uh, one of the things that Guano does or is intended to do is you can actually encode the metadata directly into uh, WAV files, for example. So it can be in the metadata inside the file, which is a nice aspect. Um, so it might be good to, uh, to encourage compatibility between these things. I have no particular need to get this done this year, but uh, we could put the filter HP and filter LP in and simply um, we can just take the definition directly from Guano and this could lead to beautiful things. Shall we? Okay. I... Yeah. Like, at, like particularly the low pass stuff is really useful for describing collections of stuff and how that's recorded. So, um, you might just to tag this this one with like next meeting agenda and we'll just yeah let's do that and it seems like ed it would be you and me taking this forward right i assume so unless any any of you who have sound experience collections want to <laughs> come and join in because that's yeah please please do join in absolutely um but you know just in terms of responsibility for finishing off this issue uh, ed and i will be the looking after it brilliant um this could be a big one. And actually it's probably like more important for 
for for people working on specimen images although like there is an application there definitely for some sound recordings as well yeah so this there i think there's a set of proposals that are here that sort of go together and one of the yeah actually i think it just says that yeah intended to resolve several other open issues and those are listed here um so this really comes comes out of the work of the that the views control vocabularies task group was um it comes out of that work and we were basically trying to describe parts of organisms and people said like well yeah we also want to be able to say something is an herbarium label and so we discussed like well do we in, do we create an organism part called a uh, herbarium label and it's like well that seemed out of scope but it is still something that people need to be able to describe and so that basically got um tossed back from that task group to the main group and uh so i basically put together this proposal that would use um an existing term that that's already a part of darwin core this um cv terms uh and then we would have a controlled vocabulary that would be used with that CV uh, term term that could be used to describe things like um, color bars, labels, um, in the audio context, things like uh, uh, a description at the beginning of the recording of what the recording's about, um, it, and also that it's a part of an organism, which would then indicate that you could expect a value for a subject part. So that's basically um, where this has come from. And I think the details of this have all been worked out. I think what we need to do is what I described earlier. We need to look at the proposal carefully and judge whether it's ready to go to public comment or not. I, I think, I feel like the need for it has been established. There's been multiple people who've said, I need to be able to say um, that there's an herbarium label here or a color bar here. I think that, I think that's been established. Um, and it also is related to the whole thing about regions of interest, because usually you don't have a whole image of the color bar, right? It's, it is a region of interest within uh, the overall image. So it does kind of go back to this issue of how do we serialize this information? But like, we have to have the terms first. Uh, and this is an attempt to basically fix that. So maybe this needs to be th the same uh, course of action as the other term, which is that we need to <laughs> read this carefully with the intention of making a decision about whether to advance it to public comment at the next meeting. Yeah, I, I think it's, I think what, what is there is good. Um, maybe worth just asking around seeing if we've missed anything obvious. In terms and of- And again, for, for the people who are not um, Tadwig insiders, <laughs> so, we there there is a a pattern like a design pattern within Tadwig for creating multilingual controlled vocabularies, and those vocabularies are extensible. So what we would be doing in this case would be to create the controlled vocabulary for this, with the understanding that it's not necessarily going to be complete, but that additional values could be added as the need for them is discovered. But I think there's a number of them that are uh, that are listed in the proposal that, that we already recognize, like that this is a label or this is a color bar or a scale bar or um, things like that. Yeah, I, I think it covers all the things people have approached us with pretty much, doesn't it? And, and also yeah. it includes, um, we did put in like spoken description for like, um, people speaking metadata into the start of audio files and things. Um, I was going to, I was going to put that as something for our, for our next meeting, which 
is becoming increasingly long on next meeting. <laughs> but we can... Yeah, I mean, I think in uh, several of these proposals, I would uh, describe as being fairly mature, like that one is has been carefully written up to include yeah. every possible detail, and we've already had feedback from people. So I, I think what really needs to happen is the maintenance group members need to get serious about like reading through the proposal and judging whether there's any deficiencies that we can detect. Um, and, and that's something we should just commit to doing on our own time. Yeah. I guess the other thing that I think that I could also say for people who are newbies is like, who, who's on the maintenance group? Like there's core members that are listed on the website. And those are basically the people that we expect should show up to most meetings. Mm -hmm. But any, the maintenance group is really anybody who shows up. So, you know, if you're interested, you don't have to be officially listed on the page. You, all you have to do is, you know, indicate to Ed that you want to be notified that a meeting's happening or whatever and show up. And basically you're in the maintenance group. <laughs> At least yeah. that's the way we've approached it in the past. Yeah, it's, um, it's quite informal. I just noticed that, Dan, if you got the same mug. Yeah, <laughs> we've been to conferences together. Okay, the outdated link in notes for CB term. So this is just something to add to the next release, isn't it? I think this is just a technical thing that we need to make happen. So like, that's the same time as the next release or can we just do it at any time? It's a, it's a next release thing, isn't I it? I think we can, I think we can do it any time. And I mean, the, the, um, implication of release basically it, so at, as a part of the change process, when they're at, like, let's say there's a new term added or a term change or whatever, like those things become live through a technical process that involves a particular repository on GitHub. And so when that, when that repository is updated and when a release of that is created, then basically the changes become live. Um, so, you know, we could make the changes now and do a release because it doesn't, rec I mean, this is basically correcting an error and um, it's just from the standpoint of efficiency, it's easier to just do them all at the same time. So if we think we're gonna have a public comment period and that that's gonna result in some other changes, I would just say, just do this in the next release. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna label it as next release for now. I assume we can, well, we've already kind of committed to doing a few public comments, at least one public comment in the next year, haven't we? Just going for the comments so far. Um, 3D terms proposal. This is the bulk of the 3D working group stuff, isn't it, this one? I think this is maybe related to that create new term uh, digital 3D media. Uh, I'm not sure why it's in a separate issue. I, I haven't reviewed this recently. Um, this is by adding some type, subtype, or not. Resource type capture. Uh, there's also other things like capture modality. As a... Yeah, I think yeah. this kind of this kind of needs. Does this need to wait for the three D group to come back to us with their actual final? Yeah, I, I think so. Often, what we end up doing is creating like a milestone of related issues that we're going to. Um, that we're going to handle as a package. And so I don't know if there's already a like 3D milestone, but that's, I guess that's what I would do. And then to ask the 3D task group as a part of 
the cleanup process or whatever to make sure that all the related issues that are in that milestone are are <laughs> cleaned yeah. up and ready <laughs> for action. I, I think I, it's not clear to me at this point how this one is related to that other proposal. So um, I think that would be it'd be good to get clarity on that. Yeah, there's, there's not currently a 3D milestone, but I'll put that on my post meeting list. Um, I mean, that's really for them to come back and tell us what they want to do, isn't it? Or what they propose to do. Fungal parts, in addition to view CV. Yeah, so this, There's so this is, a, uh, so in the very late stages of the public comment period for the uh, views control vocabularies, basically people suggested terms for fungi and we added them and then some people came up with some problems with that and we ended up jerking them out again because they weren't ready for act to be acted upon. So I think this falls in the category of it needs a champion. It needs somebody who's in the fungal community who can get together with other people in that community and decide what the necessary terms are. And that has not happened. So I think if we're going to do this thing of like the won't fix thing that um, Dan was suggesting, I think this falls into that category. It's something that needs to be done, but it's sat here for a couple of years and nobody's picked up on it. I mean, I guess alternatively, as a group, we could seek out people with that expertise and ask them to deal with it. But honestly, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know fungal people. And the person who proposed it didn't, you know, carry the ball with it. Okay. I mean, that's a kind of a close with polite explanation. If someone wants to take it on, we're more than happy for people to get involved again. Update the structure document. Yeah, this one is complicated because I think we don't, it needs, we know it needs to be done. I'm not sure that um, we know how it should be done. And and Ben, I think this, uh, I think that the structure that we choose to describe for audiovisual core probably needs to be consistent with what other groups are doing as well. Yeah. Um, and that could certainly be coordinated by the technical architecture group, I think. I mean, like this, the issue of describing structure media items, I, in my mind is very similar to the issue of describing camera trap data. So mm -hmm. you have like yeah. larger scale entities and you have smaller scale entities that are nested within them. And like, I, I'm a little bit reluctant for audiovisual core to just say like, we're going to do our own thing. And then CamTrap DP does their own thing. I mean, maybe that's what we'll have to do in the end, but I think this is a, this is like an ongoing issue for the, I think the technical architecture group. I, I don't see why you, I mean, other than the fact they're frictionless, right? So there's a different way they might want to, sort of organize things, but as far as what you're referring to, just image-based I mean, data standards, it seems like you guys are, if anybody aligns with Cambridge FDP, it seems like you guys would ship with them. Um, it makes a lot of sense. I, I imagine there are going to be limitations to what else you can actually align with, but having Cambridge DP in this one online makes a lot of sense. I mean, there is an existing structure document and a lot of it yeah. revolves around um, spreadsheets. <laughs> and how you handle one to many relationships in, right. in CSV files. It doesn't, there's nothing in it about JSON or XML or any other kind of uh, serialization that allows you to describe hierarchical structure. Um, it's not an, it's, just, it's the camera trap community that just doesn't exist. Like and I spent a lot of, I mean, at Wildlife Insights, it was a whole thing, right? Getting people to understand what JSON is, you could do that. It just doesn't, it's like you always go back to spreadsheets. Then you have the burst problem. The burst problem, by the way, is the persistent 15, 20 year problem in the camera chart community is what do you do when you take a burst of photos? You know I mean, how do you handle that versus one image? It's a, you count animals. And, but um, it's a, it, it's just it's just one of those things where it's community. You really want people to use JSON because it makes all the sense in the world, but it's just really hard to do. So you end up rolling back to linking IDs between spreadsheets. 
And if you guys go ahead and go without that, you should. That's where the we've been talking about this. That's where the community should go. We have to move people to JSON. And so the more you put it out there, the better, more exposure it'll get. And I think if camera chip DP doesn't because of practical purposes, it doesn't mean you shouldn't. You know what I mean? That may be a misalignment that just happens. Because we have to, you know. So this is yeah. like is, is this something where we should have a more quite like I would propose that we just I would propose we leave this one and I mean I think with respect to what's on the agenda for the tag and what I'm interested in doing as a part of the tag for the next year this is pretty high on you know looking at this idea of how we uh, of structure and how we use json and that sort of thing uh, I I would I intend to spend some time in the next year thinking about this so I don't think we should close it Could you link it but to I also issue don't think in we're ready. tag can you like cross two issues between two repositories yeah sure because these things are popping up and they're they're bigger and they're, you know they're going to have more application outside of any one individual repository right and it'd be nice if we could sort of not remove it from here but link it to a, t a issue over in tag like sh sh steve do you want to give a steve or ben do you want to give a brief <laughs> description of tag for those people who <laughs> go for it ben <laughs> Ben's uh, Ben's the chair, so. <laughs> so as of a month and a half ago, CC was no longer the chair. <laughs> the chair so these these tasks tactfully get out to me. The, the tag is is the technical architecture group. It's not an interest group or a, a task group. It is there to support the technical infrastructure and activities of Tadwick, which is at the heart of what uh, Tadwick does. Right, all the standard CSVs, repositories, workflows, programming language, all that kind of stuff. With it, the tag responsible for building that infrastructure that allows standards to do what they do, right? To allow the task groups and interest groups to do their job better and do their work and their activities better. And the more the technical architecture can build and produce and streamline things, the better every other task group and interest group will do because they'll have better tools more readily available where they can do better, we can produce better standards. So it's sort of a operational support group um, of highly technical topics that we sort of address, but that's, is that a good summary? Yeah. Pretty good, right? <laughs> but it kind of like kind of like it is almost a form for like making sure that like it's a suite of standards that work together as well, isn't it? In some way, yeah. yes. I so like, just um. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Like like topics like JSON LD implementation. That's really broader than one individual group. So what you don't want to do is have each standard doing their own thing, and you have to have some sort of branching organizations or branching groups within an organization to coordinate those activities because it shouldn't be up to Latimer Core to coordinate with some other projects, right? Because those, but then that's just two. What about the other guys? And so you need some sort of branching group to handle those kinds of activities. And that's what the tag does. It helps out, you know, cross collaborations and technical things. So there is an issue in the tag issue tracker, kind of an umbrella issue called um, recommendations for handling complex values. I think we, uh, I, I will just refer to this issue in that issue and then they'll be linked. Okay. You group yeah, those wait. together? So the next one is IPT version of AC. So that's the publishing toolkit version of Audubon Core. This has been ticking along, hasn't it? I've seen some. Yeah, I think Matt Blissett's actually working on that right now. Yeah, it's like a couple of days ago I got an update on that. And that's that's not really in our hands, is it? That's a IPT. Yeah, I mean it's only if they I mean I think if they ask us for help. I'm not I'm not really sure whose responsibility it is. Like it, within Darwin Core, John Wajorik has a script that pulls um changes and and regenerates the xml files that are used for the ipt but i we don't have something like that so you know it's really kind of a liaison thing between audiovisual core and gbiv so i don't know whether it's audiovisual core's responsibility or gbiv's responsibility it's kind of goes between the two okay so given there's activity happening i think we leave it until we get questions 
Um, whites are not licensed. This is a nice technical one, isn't it? Do we use whites in, rather than the subproperty license used in Darwin Core? And I, I, <laughs> are you aware of the historic reasons, Steve, for not doing this, or like there must be? Um, sorry, I was trying to make that issue link. Um, <laughs> like, why we're we using rights, not license? Yeah, I don't know. I think. I'm not sure. I've never quite understood those. The, I don't think they're used correctly because they, you know, a lot of times they both exist, right? Yeah. It's the, well, I, I guess you can have lights which aren't licenses. But... I guess licenses, sometimes it's the URI to the actual license, right? So like that's what it's a URI field. That just links to CCBY or something like that. Whereas rights are a description of the rights, maybe clauses or some sort of, if it's more technical than that. If it's not just like a URI to a Creative Commons license, you'd put it there. So at least um, there's a data type restriction on the license field. So in the in the Dublin Core specification, it says you can have a statement or you can have a URI. So that's for rights. So yeah. you can have either. I think the difference is that even if it's a URI, it's not necessarily a link to a license, but to some description, you know, according to the laws of this particular country, something else. If they're like Creative Commons licenses, those URIs do point to, I forget what they call it. Uh, um, anyway, it is a, like a textual a description. Yeah, legal code, right. So my interpretation is that uh, in either rights or license, you can directly specify the link to the legal code, um, but in rights, you might be able to specify other types of Which expressing is... these things. Then it's just the question of whether there's a reason for expressing other things. I mean, I think I'm not an intellectual property guy, but... I think in the rights field, you're going to basically talk about the copyright status. And if the copyright status is not all rights reserved, then you have to tell people how they're under what license are they able to use that. So I would see the license as being a field that you would fill in under certain circumstances within the like copyright. That's how I thought of it but like i say i'm not really an expert on that i have a, so I have a digital, digital patent firm i have a digital patent firm that's a freelance client and those guys are always fun to talk to and that's exactly right we just don't encounter it very often in what we do right i mean most everything's creative commons we just don't deal with it which is really nice but once you start getting the private sector and things it, it's absolutely true that it's, there are all kinds of technical statements and ways you can you know contact individuals and different clauses and things that they would like to put in that field yeah <laughs> 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 Like going for the hands up, David. If you want to. Yeah, um, I just looked it up. Uh, the the, uh, the terms on on Dublin Core, and I noticed that uh, for Dublin Core, license is a sub property of rights. Um, so license is more specific, and rights is, is just a wider term, which is probably why it was used here, as it gives a bit more, um, yeah bit more leeway to 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 express uh, various things including saying uh, if, if you use it as a as a textual property um saying okay here's the copyright holder or, or um uh, i don't know with a year uh, but you could also uh, uh yeah put in a license if if you really need to yeah done just, just an observation okay. assumption maybe that was part of the motivation i don't know mm. yeah I agree with that, and um, so one one example that I would uh, give is that if something is public domain, that's not technically a license because public domain and um, the Creative Commons organization has, I, I love them, but they've made things a little bit confusing by sort of turning the idea of proper public domain into 
something that they write up as if it was a license. Um, so to state that something is public domain would be a statement of rights more than a license. Um, and going from that into a question, so if there's any, so I, I'm happy with keep it sticking with rights. The example I just gave can be one example of a motivation. Um, but if there's a, is it at all justified to have both of the terms included into audiovisual code? Yeah. So I, I guess what, like, yeah, that's what I was wondering. But from the concept of, say, like, if you wanted to automatically get a subset of something which you had access to, like, instead of reading, like, thousands of different white statements, does the more specific licensing give you something you can filter data on more in a more automated manner, right? And I've, I'd argue that that's kind of like, can I use this in my research without any problems or can I put, publish this online is kind of the question we're trying to address here, right? And it'd be good to have a way of doing that, which is not reading a right statement. I would, um, so we, when we have field photos, um, we have rights holders that sometimes license their work under different types of Creative Commons licenses. And I think it is really useful to be able to filter by everything that is one kind of license. And they all have may have different rights holders, um, which is not as relevant to the search possibly. I would, I would argue for using both of them or that there is a use case for using both. I think particularly if as an example, providing a Creative Commons URL is given as an example, then I think that um, that introduces it, it makes it more of a controlled vocabulary and, and, and makes it easier for people to do the types of search you're describing. The only, um, if, if we added both terms, the only risk there for searching is that some people might put the CC licenses in one and some might put them in another. That's the catch, right? That's the problem. <laughs> Unless you took put it well. You had think, the license field was a URI is, field, but it's yeah. This is where the examples would be good. Yeah. Um, and we do distinguish within audiovisual core between terms that are expected to have URI um, values and those that are not. But I can't remember within the Dublin Core namespace whether license is in the DC namespace or if it's only in the DC terms namespace. So that could be a problem, but we could look into that. Because yeah. typically the DC terms, like if there's two analogs, the DC terms one is expected, often expected to have like a URI and the DC namespace one can just be free text but not every Dublin Core term has it in both namespaces. And I can't remember whether what the case is for license. Okay. I th for the sake of moving on, I think we leave this with like next meeting agenda and considering how many things we've tagged with next meeting agenda, it might be the meeting after the next meeting. But I think this is something we could have a sensible chat about in an hour at one of the maintenance core things and come up with a proposal. Like fairly, like we can send as an agenda item, send some like background reading around and get through it reasonably quickly, I think. Problems with CV term. That's coming from more camera trap. Yeah, I think this is it. Is this one of the ones that's included in that umbrella issue? Yeah, I think it is. Like, and it's related to in habitat, which is going to come up. So I just wasn't if I'd be person signed flag fire. Yeah. So this is like potentially even broader than that last discussion, isn't it? Like <laughs> what's this? Can you summarize the problem real quick? So this is it's going back to the the just describing what's actually in a picture. Okay. 
um and go, going from like where the previous example which is fairly where well, steve's kind of written a very detailed proposal for things like herbarium sheets and the, the acoustics thing where we have like color bars and scale bars and this is going into what's in like camera trap photos and if you go through like one that's kind of come up quite a lot is like this in habitat thing which is a separate view and it's just, so it's basically just describing what's in images and i think the the one before was a kind of broader discussion of this and like i think it's just broadening that from specimen world to to the real world of like you know there's loads of stuff in photos which we might want to describe like you know it's an organism in its habitat um but we have loads of photos of those like throughout the case and it's just distinguishing those kind of like field photographs from specimens yeah. and a few related issues so like my, my inclination with that is we probably do have just a maintenance group meeting about that and should we just look at like in habitat now while we're you know what aspects of camera trap photos do you want to support directly right because it doesn't make because it's different per camera trap is a very simple purpose yeah. but it's you know you'd want to support some of them but obviously you know supporting all of them would make a lot of sense just because it's so specific to those and it's it's kind of like what's what's useful and like so I think like this kind of like in habitat photo or, or the concept of in habitat is beyond photographs so like an organism in its natural habitat is like even the sound recording is different to like a I've recorded this in a laboratory or I've recorded this in a zoo right in many ways so it's, it's kind of like saying that's a field recording um like there's loads of details anyway that's so, a like, lot of annotation that. though I mean that's yeah I mean, camera traps take thousands. I mean, go through, and that's the whole point of having bursts because you just can't go through every photo from a camera yeah. trap. So writing that much detail, it doesn't, you know. But I mean, it kind of, the, the broader point is, I think as well, like a habitat photo doesn't necessarily mean the organism's in it. So, <laughs> and like, you know, I, I I spent a glorious few weeks getting bitten to death in like Northern Finland with <laughs> my friends, like collecting mosquitoes. And I've got hundreds of habitat photos of like <laughs> ponds, which the larvae were in, which is like important context. Yeah. And it's the habitat of that thing, but that thing is not directly visible in it. And that's not important for camera traps, right? But like that, that concept of like this is habitat or like this is the organism yeah. this habitat. Do we yeah. need to distinguish those, or is just the concept of habitat enough? Um, I like the, the I don't get a fair amount of interaction in these issues as well. I, I, no, I, I think we just bring that all together in a in a meeting of the maintenance group, just looking at that. Um, I'm not sure, Steve, if you think we can put habitat into that list you have got already or whether it I needs think more currently it's not there because I think there wasn't a consensus that it should be there like the existing proposal has all the things that were no brainers like color bar and spoken description and stuff so I think this one didn't get added because there hadn't been adequate discussion yeah I I don't, does, does anyone have any immediate opinions? Or I think we could tag that discussion onto the, if we're going to have a discussion about putting those proposals forward for review, we could have this discussion just before it and decide whether we want to add it in or get a broader consensus before we do that at the same meeting, same discussion. Should we just leave it for now? um sets of images this is like the this is the burst problem is it or, or le dealing with bursts yeah. 
<laughs> so are you ready? I don't know if anybody's familiar with this. So this is how, this is basically why it's complicated. A burst a takes burst. 20, 20 photos. You don't want to count, and it's got, it's got white-tailed deer in 10 of them. You don't want to count 10 white-tailed deer in that burst because you'll overcount your species because of ecological modeling. So, and it takes too long to go through that. So you'll count, it's 20 photos, one deer, but you're doing it by the photo. You don't know which photos had the deer of those 20. You just know that you're counting a one deer from those 20 photos. Or you go with machine learning, which does it photo by photo. And so this is the issue. How do you link, if I've identified a white-tailed deer, but I don't know which of those 20 photos it's in, I know it's in some of them, and I'm only counting one. So for camera chat purposes, you're done. But for labeling individual images, that's the, the issue. And you're talking about thousands and thousands. And that's the way before machine learning how they did count because they just couldn't get through all of them. There's just, there was, it was too many photos for any group of people to deal with. So they just did it burst wise, but it's, it's now when you have to integrate those with machine learning, cause it's doing an image by image, it's a problem, you know? Um, so that's kind of. And we're kind of, we, and we're, <laughs> to expand the problem, we've kind of <laughs> brought this together with some other like, like grouping problems, which are like slices of CT scans. Yeah. Um, so I, I suddenly when like the digitization stuff we do at the museum in London, like and then sex, we take separate photos of specimens and labels. They are all kind of like grouped together. So it's it's kind of forming like some kind of techno technological solution to saying all of these media items, however different they are, are related to the same specimen. I guess we also have that in museum a lot, which is like, you know, loads of stuff we have sound recordings of, we've got specimens of in like the grasshoppers. So we've got sound collections that need to go with specimens and they go with photographs of those specimens and photographs of their labels. So it's a... Uh, I think... Yeah. I think the goal I here is trying that, to find a generic grouping, isn't it? Like, I think the issue of linking related things is kind of being handled in the new GBIV unified model, but I don't know necessarily that that handles the um, sort of subset issue that we're talking about here. Like, like linking a specimen to a sound recording is like the sound recording is not a subset of the specimen, but like a photograph is a subset of a burst. Yeah. So you like, but we've, we've kind of like got label images as separate from them. Is it the association? We've got a whole lot of stuff, we've got a whole lot of stuff in this I... issue. Should they be separated into groups of things that can be subset and like, do we need to separate like the camera trap stuff and slices of 3D scans from this collection of same specimen labels? I'd hate thing. to I mean, just knock out everything at once. <laughs> just solve everybody's <laughs> problem with one mechanism and you're done. You know? I, I, but are these groupings, so you have either a photo to a thing or a group of photos to a thing? Is that the basically the issue? And so, because just grouping things relating things, but is it is it the grouping, how you sort of sort it I out? I think it's a grouping of things within things, not relating things to other things issue. <laughs> like where you have, you have slices within a CT, you have images within a burst, you have regions of interest within an image. So it's like a subset. How do you serialize or model that? in a consistent way. But we have got like images of the same specimen as an example in here, which is kind of a different thing then, isn't it? Like, do we need to start pulling this apart into two things? I think it's worth, yeah, I'll, I'll shush because oh, the other okay. <laughs> Sorry, no, but I think you're going in the right direction there since there do seem to be, especially if you factor in the structure of you know, a camera trap package versus a CT scan package of things, like often they'll have and need different ways of relating pieces to each other. But sorry, Leanna, go ahead. No, that's okay. I just, I, I was just gonna say, I agree with what Steve was saying that I think that these are different kinds of 
relate relationships, um, the bursts and the slices versus a label that is of a specimen. I that's I I think teasing those things out would make the problem easier to solve. Maybe. Well, like because we can just link them to a specimen, right? <laughs> Already, mm -hmm. and then that that just gives us this subset of things which are. Or we, or we can do re regions of interest to a media item to a specimen already. It, so actually, just, go ahead. No, I was, I was saying that so separating. If we say we can do that, then we're left with these groups of things, which are like the camera trap bursts, the CT slices, and we can just say this is a package of stuff. This is how you might subset it, but for all intents and purposes, it's one thing as well. But I think at Camera Traps, it's that issue of you can't, with those 20 photos in that burst group, you can't tie those to the white-tailed deer. You can't connect them. You have to connect the whole burst to the white-tailed deer because you don't know which ones, which is where the problem, you know what I mean? So it's like you yeah. can't, because you don't know which of the of the 20 images had the white-tailed deer, but you know as a group, and for camera, that's all that matters, right? So it's like grouping them and then relating that to the actual identification, not each individual image, because that would be... If you label, if you do an image to thing, then you're saying all 20 had the white tail deer, but it didn't. Only half of them did. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like you're, you're not lying, but you're you're giving false information. So you have to do it to the group and make that, which is a. I have a, a dumb first. question, maybe with when you're talking about a camera trap in that case, Ben, are you talking about specifically one that's within a cam trap DP type structure or something else? Any of them. It, this is how camera and, traps are, are done for modeling because you it, this is it's the whole that's how that's the biggest complicated that's the biggest complicating thing and that's what we had trouble with the camera trap dp is separating those out and combining it with machine learning but it's it's everywhere okay because i thought the observation piece within a cam trap dp does that is that meant to link i get that that's problematic from the audio or the audio visual core side potentially if you're trying to say this particular resource if it's if that resource is the whole package of a camera trap data set but within that camera trap data set if an observation table includes the specifics about here was the deer in this one shot so you have to relate an observation record to a group of photos you can't label you have, can't do an observation to a single photo sometimes oh, okay. unless it's like i mean learning. i think you could yeah. if you if it were machine learning, you could have a region right. of interest within the photo, and right. those could all be linked. Yeah. Got it. But there's, cool. there's also like just management reasons for taking a burst of photos as one item as well, right? Because that's distinct from any other burst and the thing. So basically, what, what we want is some kind of like media collection, which you can say in this media collection there was a deer. And that media collection just references like however many images or whatever. Yep. <laughs> Roughly. Okay. I think that makes sense. I mean, that also, I think, gives a way to handle for the situation that it sounds like, Ben, if you're talking about one where someone hasn't had the time or resources to like parse out and set up all the specific relationships versus um, later on in a project, like just knowing, seeing a worked example of how to go about that in a, the way Ed just described. And it's all the legacy data too. I mean, it's, it's millions and millions of photos, just that that's how they were organized, right? So if you publish that data, you have to be able to associate a, a group of thing, group of photos to an observation. You can't do observation to a photo, individual photo. Okay. Know, which is a weird thing. Like, I, I... <laughs> Like, correct me where I'm wrong, Steve, but I think having some kind of, we'd have something that's just groups, loads of media items together, or or just like a media, type of media item, which is just lots of different types of media. But we, we can work out a technical way of doing this and treating it as a Audubon core standard object, can't we? Or should we have a discussion? <laughs> we can have a discussion. <laughs> It seems to me like this this is something that a group of people need to who are interested in solving this problem who come from different areas yeah. need to get together and hash it out. 
I don't think as a maintenance group we're gonna solve this. <laughs> Come That's on, guys. He's, not, he's nominated you for something else, Ben. That's great. <laughs> you gotta believe in yourself, man. Come on, you gotta believe. In <laughs> okay. Um. I think like that's something we can do this year, but maybe like the second half and given how many things we've already committed to having meetings about, well, <laughs> I think we visit in the second half of the year because that, that's something there's an obvious need for. And like, I imagine we can get some people together and come up with at least specify their kind of joint requirements together fairly easily. Hey, Ed. Um, Kate is now here and she actually um, is on the 3D group. So there were some questions or discussions about the status of that. And um, yeah. we kind of deferred on that. Do you have anything you want to comment about that? <laughs> Do you mean on my end or from Ed? No, what? I mean, Kate, you, you, we were... I ended up fielding some questions about the 3D group just because I've met with you guys, but I'm not actually in the group. So I don't know okay. if people want to direct questions to you or you want to summarize like where the group is. I could give a quick summary if that helps. And yeah, if folks have questions. Um, right now, uh, we are in the throes, I guess, of writing a few implementation reports for some new terms that um, that have also been in the throes of getting defined. Uh, where we are right now was uh, to recap, I guess, the last, I don't know if this was a year or two, um, among the available uh, terms that are currently used within the audiovisual core for uh, DC type um, from the DC type vocab. Uh, part of what Doug Boyer and I think Adam Rontree and a few of us otherwise in the 3D group were noticing was that some of those terms um, don't quite seem to fit some of the data types that, um, that are frequently, that we try to describe in the way of um, CT scans versus uh, other 3D models that are, um, either generated by way of different modalities, so from a surface scan or photogrammetry or otherwise um, constructed. Uh, so I'll throw a link in either the chat or if there's a note stock, can add one there to um, where we left off kind of. I think there is a spot in the repo that lays out some of the, um, I think digital 3D resource was a term we had tried to propose adding to um, the DC type terminology, but um, they were a little bit hesitant to sort of throw that in. Um, it sounds like they're pretty, pretty conservative about adjusting some of the terms in there. So what we could do on the audiovisual core side is at least recommend um, within a new term, uh, which I think was three, off the top of my head, I apologize, it's fuzzy, uh, but 3D resource type along with a few other companion terms basically to help describe those different modalities that are used to generate a given 3D resource um, since they don't quite fit in the existing uh, DC type field or the DC um, or the additional subtype field that we had set up. Um, and I think right now in terms of getting an implementation report together for how how are some folks using those terms and are they helping with different search and other types of use cases? Um, I believe the Smithsonian, University of Michigan, and also Doug Boyer over at the Morph Morphosource side of things where they're fully implemented, I think. Um, it's, it's a matter of putting words on the page and getting them out there. So um, if folks, are folks here uh, handling CT data and other types of 3D stuff? currently if I missed any questions in all your and if that's glossing over any salient details in the recap please scream I think it's good thanks Kate um so lots of the remaining things <laughs> in the to-do list can definitely wait if people have 3d questions they want to do now but I, th I think the thing is that we we plan to wrap that up. Well, uh, words said we plan to wrap that up this year <laughs> and get that out. 
So that'd be really exciting. Yeah, if anybody can threaten us with more of a deadline too, um, that's a good one right there in the year. <laughs> but uh, I think um, with uh, Tadwood coming up in Okinawa, um, if we can uh, encourage slash entice one of the 3D folks into attending that, it's up in the air right now, but um, that might be also a spot to touch base again. Quick question too, was there a note stock for this one? Um, no. Okay, <laughs> I'll put a, that's okay, I'll put a link in the chat. Um, we've been basically just going through the issue queue and I've got a list of things to do to the issues. So apart from like, like introductions and some chats about various things, it's been good to get. Yeah, nice maybe some stuff. before we end the meeting, if we can copy the chat, I, I'm not sure I may automatically get a copy of it. Um, but I'm, it'd probably be better to just copy and paste it in a doc. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, I can set something up real quick. Cool. Um, so, so just going through like the, the remainder terms, um, the approach ChiroVox, so ChiroVox is a bat sound repository and that, that was on me to go and see that we can map their stuff to to this Audubon core, Audubon core, audiovisual core, and the sounds work we've done on that. So I, I just need to follow up with them. I did contact them, but I'm not sure. I can't remember quite where we got to. Um, Comment on that then, because uh, the uh, filter low, the guano stuff, the filter low pass, the, the filter high pass, and the time expansion, uh, if we're going to do something with that, they're nice people to talk to about those possibilities, right? So if we prepare those proposals, then, um, yeah, hopefully they can help get them right. Yeah, and I, I I know, like, like someone I know has given them loads of zero-crossing files as well, which is a whole new thing we have to deal with. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I need to get my head around that a bit more. Um, but I did, I did make contact with them and... Yeah, there's quite a lot of stuff in Bat World which we really should consider more because it's quite specialized. All right, it's no more specialized, but it's differently specialized to the stuff I'm used to and anything else. So, with that issue, what else uh, do we want to do? I'm just going to follow up. And yeah, it'd be, it'd be great if we can get one of them to come along to to one of our meetings and just chat through what difficulties they might have like beyond the kind of acoustics work we're, we've been doing already. Yeah, I think it'd be great to do that, uh, especially with these other terms. Nice nice synergy there. Yeah, that's good. Um, there's no an image or ROI as a label that's been covered in the various things we've been discussing. This one is... I think relatively simple, but something we definitely need to sort out. As how do we deal with occurrences? So that this kind of, it is like a requirement for linking directly into Darwin core, right? So yeah, it might be um useful to connect with John Wajorik and just see what their plan is for the GBIV unified model because I know they're they are going to link various sorts of non-physical, I guess you call them yeah. digital uh resources so maybe that maybe this question is going to be answered by by that so the the right or the goal of this would be to say that the uh, a gbif occurrence could could come directly from say an image or an audio file and it's not necessarily based on anything else that's why isn't it so it's not We're not, we don't have to create the observation in Darwin core directly. We could just direct create like this 
the specimen was found in this region as an directly as an occurrence or as, as an observation no, as an occurrence I don't have my no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have my head around as far so the associated specimen is that's like fairly clear there the associated observation reference is someone creates an observation reference in Darwin Core and links a media item to it. And then the occurrence is comes directly from the media file, is that right? From notes or whatever they collected at the time, right? The date, time, whatever. You could pull it from the photo, but the species. Yeah. I think the issue here is that audio visual core was kind of originally designed to be something that institutions would provide about their media items so they could be assessed for like fitness of use and what's happens and in that case you just want to say like okay yeah there's a specimen with this media item I think that we've outgrown that in the sense that now audiovisual core is being used as as a full partner with other parts of the Tadwig universe and being linked like through the audiovisual core extension in the IPT and so on. I so I just think that the original design of how the relationship between the media item and the specimen was designated that needs to kind of grow up into whatever the current infrastructure is for for linking these kinds of things i mean i it, it's not it's just not there right now and i think you know maybe just bringing john majoric into the discussion and say what is the current thinking of, of how, like how does this happen how do, yeah. <clears throat> how is this link made when you have a full set of occurrence records and media records. Okay, so that's, well, it's moving like media items into like first class <laughs> data objects as opposed to being related to just being kind of backup evidence to it, isn't it? I Are mean, you... the, ori the original outlook on audiovisual core was it was the center of the universe. And you described it and you kind of like made some references to other things. In the new view, there isn't any center of the universe. You just have linked resources. So how do you make those links between them? All right. So that's a get John to come and have a meeting with John. Or He's a busy man, isn't he? <laughs> How do we? <laughs> I think if we could get him to show up to a meeting, it, that would be awesome. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> or, or pin him down in Okinawa or something. Wait. Okay. Bribe John into coming to a meeting. Um. The view and habitat thing have done individual count. I think this is just like this is a really simple one, which is just like how many of a of an organism were present when the media item was being made, and, and I, I guess Dan and I proposed this because like the behavior and thus the kind of like sounds made by organisms dep change depending on how many of them there are, so it's good to have some kind of background context. Um, like having what one of an individual calling is very different to having a load of calling. Like even even if there's no behavior change, I think this is like fairly straightforward. Well, the reason it's still outstanding uh, as an issue is that uh, there's there are a couple of other comments. So, yeah. yeah. This idea of organism scope, which is not, I'm not that familiar with that term, but that's instead or an in, uh, addition. Yeah, and I, I guess it's probably kind of stalled because like we have an idea of what's going on, but 
we have an idea of what happens in the acoustic world, but it would be good to have some kind of input from more visual people or other things as to like what's actually useful for them. I think the concept of individual count comes out of specimens in a jar. You have a jar and it has 20 fish in it. So in that sense, I think this is pretty analogous to that. You have a sound recording and it's got two birds calling. You have a, a photo and there's a school of a hundred fish in it or something. It, it seems quite analogous to me, which is a little different than the the organism description thing that's really describing like the nature of the organism, which we're describing media items, not organisms. So I think the I think the individual count thing is just kind of a quick and dirty term that was convenient to museum curators who have things identified as lots in jars, but don't separate out individual specimens. And I think that's analogous to what we're doing here. I think that like there possibly is some difference. And so like, you know, I could put like say three things in a lab recording. And then I go out and record in like wildflower meadow. I have no idea how many there are. And that's just a <laughs> a certain number of these things, right? Which is probably what where this got stuck in <laughs> it's thinking about like I'm not sure we're gonna get there particularly easily. I, I I think the individual count thing works in a limited number of situations and whether that's just a quick, easy thing to get in. And then we spend some more time and other time looking about organism scope, like, you know, whether this is like a flock of birds calling or like a, what do you call it when there's loads of, what's the name for a group of frogs when they're crossing? I don't know. <laughs> like, but, but like, we, we, that's something which there is likely to be a need for, but I think the individual count thing covers a sufficient number that it possibly is worth just doing with a view to coming back to the scope yeah i for what it's worth um part of what's coming to mind here is so over on the latimer core side we've often ended up throwing like measurement or fact uh, and deferring to like a whole other class of terms to indicate units you know if if swamps are our unit for frog counts or something like that um i wouldn't want to overcomplicate something here if it was intended to offer that sort of a um a simpler alternative and a flat alternative where possible um so like if if the full-blown um measurement or fact thing uh is already kind of available and this provides an alternative to it um i i wouldn't object to that i feel like that's famous last words but for what that's worth <laughs> okay like uh, 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 how much of a priority do you think this is dan this number <laughs> i think it's a low priority because i was uh edging towards just saying let's not um let's not do this until someone pushes with a stronger motivation to get it in um on the other hand it's it's just sitting there in uh, darwin core and um, yeah why not uh, like i think my invitation is we, we bring it up in one of the meetings around some proposals i think the individual counts really easy the other one we might need to have a think about but like i've certainly got like hundreds of recordings right now how many individuals are in there like all of our lab recordings we know okay yeah and the, like the field the field stuff is more complicated and like we can maybe just come back to that when there's a need for it and certainly searching for individual count equals one is going to be a pretty good use case for a lot of people Working with audio, yeah. yeah. All right. I think the I think the bar for importing a term is probably lower than creating a term, because I mean, what does it even mean to say we're importing a term? It just means we're saying basically we think this is an appropriate term to use with a media item, 
we're not we're not like creating some new thing and adding it to the infrastructure. So it seems relatively harmless to import it because you've already identified a number of cases where you think it could be used and, it, and at least two people think they need it, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I think that I think that's the bar in Darwin Core, at least two different people need to say they need it, so we cross that bar. <laughs> Okay. Um. This this is a kind of like fairly uh, things that like I guess it's kind of like just adding publisher to things. So like acknowledging where or, or probably the entire chain of how you've got something. So like if you've got like the copyright owner, me. And then it's kind of, or like someone owns the rights to it, but it's made available through a third party. Just saying that that's where it came from. Or like, so like that, this is something like coming through like one of our projects where we publish stuff, which we don't really own the rights to, or we own, we have rights to publish them, but like we don't own the copyright itself. And also like images coming from my naturalist, which is Steve's example which is like giving iNaturalist some credit for being the source of that information, even though it didn't generate it. And it seems to be like a fairly popular, like, there's three people who have said that <laughs> thing. So I guess this one's fairly straightforward and we can just discuss our main group meeting, like whether we want to actually push it forward or just not bother. Like, I, I think it's probably like worth doing. Um, I think like certainly like Dan with like Zeno Canto and stuff, if we're gonna push if you're gonna push stuff ever from like say Zeno Canto to somewhere else, attaching that as a publisher is kind of useful. So like where these kind of like aggregators and like collections of media exist, saying who saying that they did act as a publisher or a provider, um, which one we need to do is on, yeah. Yes. So I think if we have a meeting which is more of the maintenance group, we can just hopefully agree to that one. Or you can all shout me down. That's fine. Yeah, we'll have a batch of terms. And I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. I'm gonna have to go, but I want to do you mind if I just jump back to those guano keys? No, go, go for it. Um do so the do you want me to put in fact, if I can share screen, if uh, I'll that's stop, not I'll interrupty, but uh, here we go. There's my screen. Um, uh, so here we've got two different things. We've got the filter HPLP and we've got the time expansion field. Um, now, I've just noticed that for this media speed we've got in audiovisual core, we already have it documented that it has a correspondence <clears throat> to time expansion. So I actually propose now that we don't do anything because it seems to be already sufficiently documented as far as I'm concerned. Um, so that's, according to me, we don't need to do anything about this time expansion bit. Um, but I'm just about to, I oh know I have already submitted a new issue where I'm proposing the filter HPLP as um where's it gone ah sorry anyway as, as an item so i hope that seems broadly okay yep that makes sense tidies have tidied that one up at least that's brilliant thank you thanks i'll stop sharing there we go so uh, i've got to go nice to meet yeah. you all see you later all right cheers dan thank you okay and i'll just put mine back up i think we're like pretty much at the end um, the view for inhabitat we've discussed in passing and comment date term. Comment says annotate. Uh, there's a few things we probably need to untangle here. Um, I think we might have to look at comment stuff again in the light of regions of interest 
just in case that comments apply to a region of interest as opposed to the whole media item. And it does it does reference comments as annotations here, but this was before we did the whole region of interest thing, which is our kind of annotation piece. Um, I don't think there's much controversy about comment date being <laughs> associated with comments. <laughs> like that seems like it's hard to argue with. Um, I think we probably parked this because it reference annotations and we, this is when we were starting to work on regions of interest and other things. Um, I think my inclination is like, yeah, we go for that. Um, we, we would have to look at whether comments apply to regions of interest. Um, that's something possibly like we could have discussion about. I don't see it being particularly controversial. And I can like I could easily come up with like various use cases for commenting on regions of interest. I'm not sure if anyone else has any comments, wild ideas. Am I going completely mad? <laughs> I I think that's like relatively uncontroversial, and we probably can resolve. And given this is the last item on the list, and there's been a few quick resolution things. I think maybe for the agenda for our next maintenance group meeting, we can just look at the, the quick fixes, um, get some activity out there, get some progress made, and then for the rest of the year, we can focus on some of the things which require a little bit more like thought, consultation, and reflection. If everyone's happy with that. I'm all for that. <laughs> I, okay. I would say in anything that appears to be fully developed enough that it could go to public comment in the near future let's deal with in the next meeting <laughs> yeah. and th that that should clear like a good number of items off of that list and good progress made we've done we've done the issue queue <laughs> i will go through and <laughs> I'll go through and um, put the comments and things we've discussed up and like the things we've done. Um, and I thank you all for joining. Um, do any of you have any questions or comments after you've seen the kind of things we've been considering or the kind of things we focus on when we have a chat? No. In that yeah, case, before I oh, before I end the call, do um, is there anything? Did we get everything we wanted out of the chat? I'll grab the Earth of Foxes comment. <laughs> I, <think. laughs> I I don't have anything before uh, Steve. I think you were mentioning. Uh, okay. okay. Hmm. Yeah, maybe I can just do the whole thing. Let's see. Hmm. Okay. Okay, I'll just try to capture whatever's not there and put it in the doc before I close the meeting. But um, I will, whenever people think they're done talking, I'll turn the recording off. <laughs> okay, like, I, I think we leave it at that. Um, thank you all for coming. Um, you are always more than welcome to uh, come to our maintenance group meetings. Um, we have set a schedule, which is third Wednesday every month. Um, we'll make sure... It's up on um, our GitHub page anyway, like the dates of the meeting. Um, we're trying to keep a regular schedule from now on, um, just so it's a bit predictable and people can plan their work lives around it. Um, and if no one else has any questions, we can leave it there, I think. But uh, thanks again for coming. It's been great to see, see you all. And thanks for your comments and questions. It's been really useful. Thank you. And thanks to Steve for organizing. The <laughs> Exactly. Thank you guys.